Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be walking everyone through how to input correction file data using our S1210 EMI pre-compliance software as well as setting custom limit lines. During today's video we will be using the DSA815 spectrum analyzer and ours will have the tracking generator option. Some of the recommended options that you're going to need if you are going to go out there and follow along with the video is the EMI software, which we will be using today, which is the S1210, and you will need the EMI settings as well. So that's going to be the EMI DSA 800. You see that right here. So just be sure when you are looking to do some uh, emissions measurements that you do purchase these with the spectrum analyzer. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's load up the S1210 EMI pre compliance software and let's take a look at the uh, correction factor data. So how you pull that in. Um, and how you can add your own. All right, here you're gonna find your Regal S1210 EMI pre-compliance software. So when you do go out there and you do purchase the Spectrum Analyzer or the software from Regal, just be sure you do save the software license certificates. And this is going to allow you to pair it up to your exact analyzer using the serial number, and then you're gonna be able to utilize the different options. So during today's video, we just created a new setup, so you will see it is test zero. So we're going to go ahead and use that for today. Um, and during today's video, we're only going to really focus on the correction configuration. So it's going to be importing correction data, uh, both from a file as well as making your own, and then creating different limit lines. So this is going to be particularly useful um, for those of you who are going out there and doing your own measurements. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's start with the correction configuration. All right, so we've just selected our correction configuration uh, section within the setup files of our S121 EMI pre-compliance software. So let's walk through a few of the general criteria and options that are available through the software. So I'm kind of starting in the upper left hand corner, you will see a uh, new test, import test, save, as well as a print and screenshot option. Just to the right of that, you'll see a start pre-scan, pause, um, pre-scan continue, as well as a few different options there. And then finally, you'll see the switch workspace as well as the data manager. So for today's video, we're going to spend a considerable amount of time in the data manager uh, section. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our tests right here under the measurement tab. You will see test zero, uh, a couple different options here. When you do want to switch tests, all you have to do is left click. So let's go ahead and left click test one. And you will notice this test zero is still highlighted. So when we are looking to change the criteria of different tests, just go ahead and right click and hit activate. And now you will be within this test one. Let's go ahead and go back to test zero and I'm just gonna right click and hit activate. Let's go ahead and go back to the correction configuration page. All right, so now we're on the correction configuration page and you will see the correction preview being kind of um, front and in the middle right here. This is going to display the file that you import from your correction file setup. You will see this graph does have amplitude along the y-axis and frequency along the x. So today we're really just concerned with importing the correction file for our attenuator. However, when you're going out there and doing this on your own, uh, you can of course use the same methodology for um, a lot of the different pieces of equipment. Where the nice part about the software is, is that you can have multiple correction files active at the same time. So to do that, you just hit pre-amplifier and then antenna. All right, so you see those two are now active. Right now there's nothing in here, so we don't have any files, but that's how you would do it. All right, so for today's example, we are just gonna go ahead and do an attenuator. So let's go and click on the uh, data manager up here. You will see a file populate. Um, like I mentioned before, we're just doing an attenuator. So we're gonna go ahead and click on attenuator and add new. So here you're gonna see the title ATT period ATC. Let's go ahead and create a display label. So let's type in 20 dB. It is linear and it is in uh, dB. So we're happy with that. Let's go ahead and add the frequency. So let's say it starts at 10 kilohertz and it's a 20 dB level. All right. And let's say it ends at one gigahertz and 20 dB level. DB level, there we are. All right, so it looks like all the data is good here. Let's go ahead and change the title. So you see it right now is labeled ATT period ATC. Let's rename that to 20. All right, 
perfect. So now let's go ahead and hit the X. Let's go down to our correction file setup here and go to browse. Under demo workspace, you'll see files. And you'll see 20 period ATC. You hit open. And you will see the, um, the map being populated here as well. Um, that's how you know it did import correctly. And then why don't we go ahead and let's select attenuator. All right, so you will see the yellow line here indicating um, it is 20 dB um, correction file there it has been imported. So it's a great visual way to see, um, hey, my file did get imported and this is kind of what it's doing. All right, so that should just about wrap it up for the um, correction file setup. Um, let's, let's go ahead now. Let's take a look at the scan configuration and take a look at some of those limit lines. All right, so now we're on the scan configuration section. And you will see we have our limit line set up here in the upper left corner and kind of the same methodology as the correction configuration. This allows you to enable different lines as well as import different files. Just below that, you'll see your pre-scan setups. So this is um, obviously for your pre-scans. And then just to the right of that, you have your final scan setup. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave them kind of defaulted at peak and their criteria. Uh, today we're really just concerned with limit lines. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the data manager. And this is going to be right up at the top right here. And we're going to create our own custom limit lines. So let's go ahead and select limit lines and then select new. And here you're going to find it, limit period LIM. Let's go ahead and let's call this test levels, test levels one. All right, so it is going to be a linear, and we are going to have the amplitude units as dB microvolt. So let's go ahead and scroll down here, dB microvolts. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start at 10 kilohertz at a 60 dB microvolt level, and go to 50 megahertz at another 60 dB microvolts level. All right, now let's go from 50 megahertz to a 50 dB microvolt level, and let's go all the way to 150 megahertz. Let's keep that level the same. Then finally, let's go ahead and let's do 150 megahertz at a 30 dB microvolt level. And let's decrease it a little bit. Let's go ahead and let's go to 300 megahertz and let's go down to 20. So you should see that line kind of going down. All right, so it looks like we have all of this answered correctly. Um, this is kind of ending and beginning the line. So that's why you see it cor correlating like that. You have to start at 10 kilohertz and at 50 megahertz. And if you want to space there, um, you can space them. However, we just picked it up right where the last one left off. All right, so now it looks like everything is entered here how we want it. Um, let's go ahead and change the name though. Go ahead and change that to test level one. All right, so now we're satisfied with that. Let's look at it one more time. Excellent. Let's go ahead and click the X. And let's go ahead and go to browse right here for our limit line one. Here you'll find test level one. Go ahead and open it. And it did pull in, so we're, uh, we're satisfied with that file. And let's make sure we check that box. Let's go ahead and go to measure. Let's go ahead and take a look at our line. All right, here we are. So you will see we're losing a little bit of it uh, because uh, the amplitude doesn't quite go down to 20. Um, but this does give you the idea. So here you'll see we start at 60. And we can take a little closer look at this right here. We start at 60. We go down to 50. And then um, eventually we go to 30. So one of the cool things about this software um, is if you do want to change some of the criteria for these limit lines, we just go right on back over here to scan configuration. And let's go back to our data manager and let's take a look at our test level one limit line. Let's say we want to switch this from 60 to 70. All right. And then we go ahead and change that on there. And why don't we go leave that at 60 so you should see a, a downward slope of that, uh, that line. All right. Let's. Um, take a look now and look there it is kind of automatically updates it so um, you, the changes once you make them will automatically show up on your um, 
on the screen for the measurement window. All right, so that should just about wrap it up for today. We walk through importing the correction files and we use a 20 dB attenuator as well as creating custom limit lines. These are going to be particularly useful when you're going out there and you're doing your own EMI measurements. Feel free to reach out to us if you're ever in need of any rental equipment, including any spectrum analyzers, uh, listens, or any types of other emissions equipment. Thank you.